perhaps I may, uh, on the issue of ideology, which we were discussing, Mr. Vincent and, and Prof here in Lagos, um, I mean, Mr. Vincent talked about I infrastructure, um, but I'm talking about stomach infrastructure, which appears important to a lot of people, uh, no matter what we say. And when we look at uh, underdevelopment, which Professor uh, Oyebody has, has mentioned, it, it seems to be very key in, in all of this, in, in how our elections go, so that's really not smokescreen. But if you look at that, look at the history of our elections and to the point that they have gotten to, how can we disabuse or educate the people uh, of the importance of an election? Actually, it's not as if people do not know what to vote for or how to vote. But most of these votes are driven by sentiment, either ethnic, either religious sentiment, and of course um, the issue of social um, stomach infrastructure further exacerbates it. And even if you look at it, looking at the trend from 1999 till date, normally vote buying is not been as huge as the way it is presently. Now it's not just there is a demand for it, there is also a ready available supply. People are waiting to sell their vote before exercising their franchise. And you may also understand that in all the off-cycle elections, this also happened as a result of the fact that Many of the people in those states have not collected salaries for months. What do you expect? Then what exactly is the value of a vote? That's a conversation that is missing within our own context. People do not really understand what the value of the vote is. They understand that it has to do with public delivery of, of goods and services, but the immediate, the 5,000 that is available to them, that can buy so much means a lot. Then when we talk about ideology, yes, we know that since 1999 or for quite a long time, we've not had parties with ideology in the country. But for the first time, we see a difference, not I largely ideological in this campaign. We are seeing parties who are showing outrightly in their policy documents that they are pro-market. And you are seeing the other party trying to say that, look, I'm welfareist in terms of what they are putting on the table. Of course, when they go to the campaign ground, nobody really talks about that. Everybody spends so much time abusing the order, talking about what is happening, pushing issues left, right, and center. Either, in fact, it's a, game, a, it's a game blame from the two dominant parties. So it doesn't allow for issues to really come on the table. And people are not also asking about issues because they think about... If my, part, if my ethnic group loses power, when does it actually get back to us? If we are, no longer, if we are not on the ballot this uh, election, that is another four years for us to be on the ballot. Uh, but I think there will be upsets in these elections. There will be some fringe parties winning seats at different points. And that is actually a positive to see that the individual do matter. Some of the things, the, the kind of campaigns they've run, Aside from the big campaigns, we also tend to elevate and make things better in 2023. Uh, Madam, if I can uh, quickly follow up on that. You talked about sentiment the other time, and um, it's, it's like you read my mind. Because um, to a large extent, uh, just as uh, Professor Ibode has mentioned, uh, a lot more is, a, a lot, ideology plays a lot less role. Uh, these days in the elections. There are ethnic sentiments, there are religious sentiments, and now you have also mentioned another one, stomach sentiment. In, at what point do we begin to talk about the real issues? And voting is tomorrow. How do we educate the electorate listening to us, watching us right now, on the importance of playing less on sentiments and more on the real issues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, for me, I actually think that uh, sometimes we, we over exaggerate uh, uh, these real issues. I, I, I think the issues around what people like to call stomach infrastructure is actually a real issue. It is an issue. Uh, the issues of ethnicity and, and regional divisions and all that are actually real issues. They are not problems actually in themselves. 
It is how we manage them, how we engage them, the way we do the mobilization, the kinds of conversation we put to the table, are actually the issues. So, so if issues, so it's about inter-ethnic relationship in the Federation, there is nothing wrong with that. If you are talking about inter-religious relationship in the complex Federation like ours, it's an issue. But when you elevate such things beyond the larger political economy issue that sustains the federations, then it becomes, it becomes a problem. So I, I, I think the challenge, and, and, I, and I think Prof got this quite right earlier when he was talking about the history of our politics and the character of the political parties, particularly in the pre-independence periods and the immediate after. The challenge is that those periods, those, those periods were actually periods of movement, uh, uh, you, you, know, you know, political movement. So, so you cannot simply categorize action A and action group as simply uh, a political party. It was a huge movement. The NCNC was, was a movement, uh, and NAPU was a movement. So those were movements, and therefore movements are characteristically issues-based. They, they are focusing on a particular issue. And, and that was the interesting part. But since then, particularly as the world globalizes and the whole conversations around global economic doctrines are become, is becoming much more harmonized and unified, the challenge we have is not for me lack of a particular way of thinking. It is largely that there, there are no alternatives. So there is no major alternative to the current conversation.